And then four kinds of prayer to build up the relationship with God. Because when the relationship with God is good, then He will give us spiritual gifts. And also He will give us more spiritual strength. And the spiritual gift will go to a higher level when we have a close relationship with God. So four kinds of prayer to build up the relationship with God. Prayer of grace. That is from God to us. God is loving me. God is blessing me. God is laying His hand upon me. God is giving me spiritual gifts. God is forgiving me. So it's all from God. So when we pray, we can say, God, you're loving me. You're, you're, you're blessing me now. You're with me now. You're, you're with me all the time. And you want to use me. And you want to give me a spiritual gift. And you want to raise me up to a high level. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So the first is, to declare the grace of God. So that's the prayer of grace. We spend more time praying that because when we love God and appreciate God's blessings, His grace, He will bless us automatically. Some people think you have to beg, you know, many times and say, Oh, I need healing. I need money. I need money. I need money. They think that, you know, Jesus said, Don't use repetitive words to pray because, uh, but we can praise we can use repetitive words to praise but don't use repetitive words to ask for something in the prayer actually god already knows what we need we don't have to tell him uh, again and again we just tell him once he heard it and then you just keep loving god and then god will give those things to us for instance i always want to bless more people i want god to open the way for me and then God does it. So I just met a few uh, minister, and then that opens the way for me to go into another field of a mission field. And also, uh, God is just opening up way, opening up ways for us if we love God and really declare God's grace, always glorifying God. When we declare God's grace, we're glorifying God. So that's why I motivate you. In your message, always talk about the goodness of God. God is a good God. And then when you talk about God's grace, it's according to the theme. For instance, the, now the theme is spiritual gift. Then we say God is all spiritual gifts. He is full of these spiritual gifts. When Jesus came on earth, He has all the spiritual gifts He needs. And He has all the spiritual gifts in His hand. And He can give those to us according to His will. And He can give us in abundance. So these are uh, words of grace to motivate people to receive spiritual gifts from people. And then when we have compassion on people, God is very happy. And God will for sure bless us with more spiritual gifts and give us the power in the spiritual gifts that we can, for instance, we pray for the sick that more people will be healed. So we always want to glorify God in our, in our preaching, and in our daily life and in our words, whatever we speak, we always glorify God. Then God is happy with us. Because the Bible tells us to glorify God. That all glory will go to God. That, that, that is God's will. So in our messages, we always want to glorify God. And then we want to motivate people to change. And as for the spiritual gift, uh, how people change. Some people waste their spiritual gifts. Some people, they sin, so they... Uh, the spiritual gift cannot be used and then how we can use it to, uh, so today I talk about the how how we can use the spiritual gifts is to have a close relationship with God and then discern the spiritual gift we might have and start to use it and have compassion on people and then start to use it so break up the steps clearly so people can uh, know how to use the spiritual gifts so when we preach also we want to Break up different things. Tell people about different things about God's grace. And then about how we have fall short, fallen short of the glory of God that we have not used His grace, we have not lived out His grace, and we have not accepted His grace to the fullness. And then how we can live out His grace to the fullness. How we can use His spiritual gifts to the fullness, to, uh, to the fullest. So I, for myself, I just ask God, Lord, please open the way for me. And God continues to open the way for me. And I thank God for that. Okay, and then, so I'm talking about the four kinds of prayer. The prayer of grace, to declare God's goodness. 
also in our messages we always want to talk about God's goodness and then the prayer of worship is from us to God so God I love you I adore you I worship you and I also want to put in some words that are more sentimental now God is sentimental with us in Zephaniah 317 Zephaniah 317 that it says that you know God rejoice over us with singing he is sentimental he is happy with us his his heart is filled of emotions of love emotions positive emotions toward us so we should also have positive emotions toward God you know the Bible says that you know can a mother forget her suckling baby even though if she forgets him I will by no means forget you so that God is sentimental he remembers us so so we can you know in our prayer worship we can say Lord I hold on to you if God is so sentimental with us so we can be sentimental with God too Lord I hold on to you I like you I love you I adore you I enjoy you so that's how I pray Lord I enjoy you I really like you I admire you I enjoy being with you I want to be with you more Lord I want to be with you more I want to be with you all uh, all the days of my life and for the whole day every day Lord I want to live in your grace so that's prayer of worship I want you I need you I want to come to you and then third is interactive prayer it's a combination of, the, of uh, prayer of grace and prayer of worship that whenever I love you I know that you have grace toward me you remember my prayer you appreciate my prayer and then you bless me so whenever I love you I know that you're happy with that and you bless me so that way we have more joy we know that anything we do right according to God's will then God is very happy so whenever I worship God God is very very happy and God will bless me so that's interactive prayer so when we pray we can say Lord I love you I really love you and when I love you I know that you are pleased with that and you bless me more and more so we can have that faith yes whenever I obey him whenever I love him whenever I serve him God is very happy so when I love God God is very happy and God will bless me and so that is interactive prayer and so every day I will have this belief all the time that I have this faith all the time I love God now and God is very happy with me I serve God now and God is very happy with me thank you Lord thank you Lord you're always happy with me when I love you when I adore you when I serve you when I glorify you you're always happy with me and you're blessing me now so that's interactive prayer I hope you know all this you take notes and teach your people and or you can watch this video again to get the points so that you can help more people so you can help people with uh, you know I thank you thank God for the, the good teaching that God has given me uh, it's you know God has given me the, the gift of, of uh, discernment of teaching I thank God that he can dis help me to discern the different teachings and how to break it down to different uh, little points so that people can understand how to pray and then prayer of commitment that Lord I want to commit my life to you I've devote my life to you my whole life belongs to you everything belongs to you so these four kinds of prayer will build up our relationship with God and also will strengthen our spiritual gift so the prayer of grace declaring God is you're so good so wonderful and the prayer of worship I adore you I love you I enjoy you I hold on to you I need you interactive prayer and whenever I pray to you I know that you love me I know that you bless me I know that you're happy with me and I know that you you you're pouring blessing upon me so I'm very very happy you're smiling at me so I'm very happy and a prayer of commitment I want to devote my life to God more and more hallelujah praise the Lord and then we want to be filled with the Holy Spirit so that the spiritual gifts will come stronger now, these are steps to uh, how to be filled with the Holy Spirit 
continually. First, repent and turn away from all sins because, because God hates sins. All, any kind of sin, any kind of lust, anger, frustration. Now, there are many people that are frustrated with their wife and children. They yell at them all the time. They don't live out God's grace. When we live out God's grace, then we, when we look at our wife and our children, we'll have compassion on them. We'll like them. We'll say, you are precious to me. I want to bless you. I want to help you. I want to uh, appreciate everything you've done for me. So we repent of our anger toward people. We repent of our lust. We repent of our frustration, of our lack of faith and our worries and and uh, negative thinking and feelings. So repent and turn away from all sins. Not just repent. Turn away from the sins and, and t uh, take positive actions according to the Bible. And then second, love and follow the Bible. So it's very important to follow the biblical way. There are some people, I noticed that there are some preachers, they preach not according to the Bible. And they seldom use the uh, passages. They just talk a little bit of it, about the passages and then they'll go everywhere and they talk about different things and some of these things are not are not necessary from the Bible so we want to love and obey the Bible and and remember the Bible and live out the Bible and then three believe that God wants to fill us so when we want to be filled with the Holy Spirit don't think that God is far away from us he's right here he's everywhere so when we love him he's happy to fill us with the Holy Spirit father you're happy to fill us with the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you, thank you, thank you. So whenever we love you, you fill us with the Holy Spirit more and more and more. So we can live out, you know, that we have this love of God flowing out from us. And then number four, spend long hours loving God and hungering for God. So it's not just the mouth saying it, but the whole heart that we love God, we are you know, hunger for God. Lord, I want you. I want you. I desire you. I want to be with you. I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want you to change my life. Lord, I need you to change my life. Thank you, Lord. I enjoy you. So spend more time loving God. Even if the, uh, the you know, what we say could be repetitive. Uh, it's, it, it's a lot of, I love you and I know that you love me. I know that you're happy with me. That whatever I do right, you're very happy and you want to bless me. So we declare this and believe this. And then God is very, very happy to bless us. So this is very important point. Long time. The more we love God, the more we praise God, the more He will fill us with the Holy Spirit. Now I noticed that in Africa, you you really are gifted with dancing and singing. You really like that. Uh, that's good, you know, that you can come to God with that. But I hope that you put in more grace in it and say, when I dance to God, I appreciate God's goodness. God is good, and I dance with you know appreciation of God's goodness. When I dance with appreciation of good God's goodness, again, God is very happy. It's not just action. I noticed that some people just like to dance. They just dance and just dancing might not please God. It's dancing and with a heart to appreciate God's goodness, God's grace. I always say, God is so good, so I want to glorify God in my dance. I want to think about God. I want to, when we lead, uh, you know, prayer or praise and also dancing, we want to glorify God and when we dance we don't just dance we tell people God is good God is good God is wonderful God is loving God is full of love God is blessing us now hallelujah <laughs> so spend more time loving God all the time okay number five obey God in every area especially the great commandment and the great commission so it's the Holy Spirit the infinite Holy Spirit is for obeying God in every area, especially the Great Commandment and the Great Commission, that uh, the Great Commandment is to love God uh, with all our heart, all our soul, and then also to love people as ourselves. And then the Great Commission is to preach the Gospel, baptizing them in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and whatever t Jesus has taught us, we'll teach them to obey, not just to teach them, but teach them to obey. Then we are obeying God, and then God is pleased with us. And then take care of problems in our lives. 
if we have problems in our life, our sins, our uh, negative thinking and emotions, negative way of life, uh, negative actions, negative relationship with people, and then the laying on of hands by a spirit-filled person and sp uh, spirit-filled meetings are helpful. So the receiving of laying on hands by spirit-filled people who are biblical, who are uh, preaching the Word of God in the right way. Now there are preachers, they are not preaching the right way. They're not, they're not preaching according to the Bible. Uh, don't follow those people, even though, even if they have, you know, seems that they have strong anointing. Don't just go to the people with the strong anointing, but with good teaching, that they really glorify God. They talk about God. So, when, we lay, when people like that lay hand on us, or the pastor lay hand on people, and then uh, also those who don't have the evil spirit can lay hand on each other, and then we've built up the spiritual strength. We spend more time loving God, and we can feel the power of God. We can feel the Holy Spirit, and then we'll feel more and more with the Holy Spirit and with the spiritual gifts. And then the spirit-filled meetings are helpful. It will help us to, to, uh, to receive the anointing of the Holy Spirit and to receive spiritual gift and have a strong hunger for spiritual gifts. I really want that. that 2 Cain 2.9 And so that when uh, Elisha, uh, you know, he followed, followed uh, Elijah and then uh, Elisha said in the fourth line here, Please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. So he said, You have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I am taken, taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it shall not be so. So Elisha really hunger for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. So I hope we all hunger for that. But the hungering for that is not just hungering for experience. But we hunger for a close relationship with God. We hunger for obedience to God and serving God and glorifying God, hungering for following God's will, entering God's perfect will. So that is, that is the right hunger. Some people just hunger for experience. Some people go to meetings, they go to uh, many uh, spirit-filled meetings and they just want to lay hand on and fall down and then uh, they, they like that feeling. Now, it's not bad. But I'm saying this is all for is all for us to be used by God and obey God and serve God and glorify God. So it's not just for the experience, but to glorify God and to serve God. So that's very, very important. And most important is to have love for people because if we just want the spiritual gift without the love of people, then it's not useful. First Corinthians thirteen one. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could m remove mountains, but have not love, I have, I am nothing. So if we just have spiritual gifts and perform great miracles, but we don't have love for people, then we are nothing. So it's very, very important to say God loves people. So God is happy when we love people. So I hope you understand that. God is happy when we are nice to people, when we build up people, when we are kind to them, we help them, we build them up. God is very happy with us when we do that. So I hope that we all will, will do that and say, yes, I want to bless my family first because those are the people close to us. If we cannot love the family members, then we cannot love other people. First, we love the family members. But some people say it's very hard because uh, my wife always uh, nagged me because we have done something not pleasing to her. So we want to communicate with the wife. Uh, in what way can I improve? Now, sometimes some pastors put all the time in the church and no time for the for the wife and the children. That's not biblical because the Bible says that love your wife as yourself. So we should love our wife as ourselves and then so we should uh, 
be kind to them. So the first area we exercise our love, to love our family members, to love our church members, to care about them, not just to use them, but to care about them. And whenever they do anything good, we appreciate them, we thank them openly and say, this person has witnessed to many people, he has served God, he is a good Christian, I really like that. And, and then, uh, so we all appreciate, appreciate to, so that all people learn to appreciate the good things of other people. So to love. Okay, now we talk about another area is to how to receive messages from God and converse with God. Uh, that, that is one area to build up the spiritual gifts. How to hear messages from God and then how to converse with God. Now first, Jesus has promised us, God has promised us that, that we can hear His voice. John 10, 27, My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. So, Jesus' sheep we can hear his voice. Now, many people say, I don't, uh, I don't hear his voice. Now, the, ho the first voice we hear is when the Holy Spirit convicts us of sin. That is the first voice, John 15, 8, 16, 8. And when he has come, the Holy Spirit has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. So the Holy Spirit comes, he will convict the world of our sins and of righteousness and what righteousness is what we should do how we should obey the commandment and of judgment in the future we have a judgment everything we think we say we uh, we do will be put on the judgments uh, table and then God will judge us so we all come you know when when we have the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit will speak to us and tell us our sins. Now, if you are a born again Christian, you'll hear the voice. You'll hear the voice to remind you of your sins. And then we want to repent of the sin and turn away from the sin. Whenever the Holy Spirit convicts us, don't reject the Holy Spirit. Always respond to the Holy Spirit and say, God, I want to respond to you. I want to love you. I want to uh, repent of my sin and turn away from my sins. Lord, help me. So that's the first voice. If we don't respond to this voice, we won't be able to hear God more. The first voice is to hear the voice of conviction of our sin whenever we sin. So have you noticed the voice of conviction that the Holy Spirit speaks to you and tell you about your sins? Do you turn away from the sin immediately? In one second, I hope you respond to God in, in, immediately in one second. God says, don't look at that woman. Stop looking at that woman. And God says, don't yell at your children. Don't yell at the people. St immediately stop that. That's not the right way, even if they've done something wrong. We want to guide them, lead them to repentance, and ask them, you know, what you've done, do you think is right? And do you believe that God can see that? And how can we please God? How can we repent and turn away from the sin? So guide them, respect them as human beings as children of God they are you know we, they're worthy to be uh, respected that we should respect them so whenever we don't respect people then we repent of our sins and then first Corinthians 12 3 that's another conviction of the Holy, Holy Spirit therefore I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed and no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. So that no one speaking by the Holy Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed. So if anyone curses Jesus, then he's not, uh, he doesn't have the Holy Spirit. And no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. So if we can confess Jesus as our Lord, as our Savior, then we have the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit's work to convert us. So that's the second voice that we, I want to hold on to Jesus. So do you want to hold on to Jesus? You want to say, yes, Lord, I want to believe in Jesus. I want to follow Jesus. I want to please Jesus. I love Jesus. I like Jesus. If you have all this, that is from the Holy Spirit. So 
we notice, we pay attention to how the Holy Spirit speaks to us, to remind us of our sin, and also to guide us to, to trust in Jesus, to love Jesus, to obey Jesus. Okay, and then Isaiah 55, 11, So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to, my, to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. So God's word, the Bible, that goes forth from his mouth, it shall not return to him void. That means without accomplishing what it's supposed to do. But it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. So the word of God will accomplish what God pleases. And it will prosper in the thing for which God sent it to do. So this is talking about the word, the word of God to speak to us. So when we read the Bible, the Bible will speak to us. The Holy Spirit will speak to us through the Bible. So the Bible tells us God is gracious. 